Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Programming with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial. I've received a lot of questions from you guys on how to run your Python code on the Internet. Seems like a lot of people are having trouble with this, and no, you do not need Mod Python or Mod WSGI. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. In part 13 and 14 of this tutorial, I showed you how to perform web scraping, which is taking information from a website. And here you can see the results of that. Here is the title that I pulled from the Huffington Post. And I pull all this information from the Huffington Post because it's the most popular blog out there. And I also pulled a link to the original article, along with a large amount of information I pulled from the original article. So it's not just your simple little description like you see if you pulled this directly from an RSS feed. And you can see here, that's, I'm going to show you how to make this today. If you click on original article, it takes you right to the original article. And it's always considered a good idea if you do pull information from a website that you provide a link back to the original article. So now I'm going to show you how to do all of this on the internet. And as you can see here, I'm doing this from my local host, which is right here directly on my server, and from the CGI bin folder. So I'm going to jump over here to a program called Text Wrangler, and I'm going to create the whole thing for you right now. So we start off by pointing towards our interpreter, and more than likely this is going to be the location for you, meaning the Python interpreter. And what you need to do is type in content-type colon to tell the browser what type of content you're going to be passing, followed by another print command that's empty, and then print. And of course we're going to define our HTML tag and our header tag. And here you can see it's just like regular Python. There's nothing weird about it. A lot of you guys are sort of hung up thinking that this is more difficult than it really is. It's very easy. And I'm just typing, typing in Huffington Post feed. And you can do this with any feed. If you didn't see that uh, 13 and 14 tutorials, take a look at them. I show you everything you need to know to be able to perform website scraping, or how to automate a website, because you could easily just put this information directly into a database, or put it on any web page, or anything that you want. So I'm sure you probably understand what I'm doing here. Now to take all of that code from that original program that I wrote that performed the website scraping, I'm going to open up Eclipse, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to select all of this information except for this final tag, and I'm going to paste it right in here. All I did, pasted everything in here. And I don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to keep everything nice and neat. And then you're really not going to be editing anything except for that information that is going to be printed on screen. So I just want to cycle through all this code and find the parts where I'm printing to screen. So let's say, for example, I want to make the title easier to see. And so I'm going to put an H3 tag around it and then close off that h3 tag, just like that. And then let's say, instead of having a link printed on a screen, I actually want this to be like I showed you in the example here where it's original article. I'm just gonna put the HTML directly right in here. A, h reference is equal to, and you wanna put a single quote here, remember, and then a double quote to end that. And then I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna remember, close that off with a single quote. I'm going to close off that reference there and type in original article and then close off the link tag with the closing brace there and then a double quote. And then, so this is going to print the title, this is going to print the link back to the original article. Now I'm going to scroll down here. This is the part of the code that prints out line by line the original article. So I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to come in here. I'm sort of doing this right out of my head. Let's say I want to do a line break after each one of these. Just do that. That's all you got to do. And then after you get that done, then you want to close off your HTML. Print, create another line break, and then I'm actually going to close off the body. And that's pretty much all you have to do. But I'm guessing one of the other things that you're probably hung up on is you have to come into the terminal and you have to give it proper permissions, this new code that you created. And of course, you're going to want to first save this. Save, and then jump into the terminal area. I'm going to zoom in here. And if you're on any type of a Unix system, this is how you change it. Sudo allows me to perform super user or root commands. Change my 755. And then this is H-U-F-F-F-E-E-T dot P-Y. And I'm going to type in my password. And this would work on any type of Unix system. And then we're going to close that off. That's all saved. And if we jump over here to our new created file and run it, 
you can see it pulled all of that additional information in. Now the only reason why this looks different than the other one that I created is because I didn't put a line break after original article. So let's say if I want to do that, it's real simple. Just coming down here again. Remember I'm just doing this right out of my head as we're sort of going here. Like that. File. Save. Don't have to go in and change the permissions on it again. Jump back out of here and reload it. And there you can see the final results. If you have any questions, if you'd like the code, it's all freely available at NewThinkTank.com. You can use it however you want, make money off of it, do whatever makes you happy. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And in the next Python tutorial, I'm going to set up a simple chat system. It's going to allow you to chat with people, and it's going to go through some other networking issues in relation to Python. Till next time.